Uh, my name is Neil Melanson, and I'm the head jiu-jitsu coach and grappling coach for Extreme Couture in Las Vegas, Nevada. How many times have you worked with Randy for fights now? This is actually the second uh, second fight I've worked with him. I worked with him for Noguera, and then now for Brandon. So I, I came on to Randy's staff about a year ago, and I took over the program in Las Vegas. and. Uh, you know, training for Nogueira, and we, we had a good synergy. You know, we had a good uh, we trained together, and he, you know, he liked me, and I liked training him. He's he's easy to coach. So. What was it? What was it about you that made Randy select you to be the grappling coach at Extreme Control? Like, what, where did you come from? What's your background? Uh, well, as far as grappling, um, my grappling background is kind of a catch wrestling background, a little different than typical, like uh, like more like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And uh, I trained out of a gym in LA called Ayastan. That's run and owned by Gokor Chavichian. And he was a, a top student of Judo G. LaBelle. And that's where I, I was training and I met Caro Parisian. And me and him trained a lot. And he actually trained me. And uh, I became a black belt eventually under him. But he became like my best friend. And actually I coach him now. Was with him for years, and then uh, Randy. I heard that Randy was looking for a new coach to to run a program for him. For him. I'm a very organized person, very systematic with a lot of things. So I, uh, you know, I had met Randy before, and I talked to him, and he asked me if I wanted the job. So I just came out and tried it out, and I liked it. So I've been going ever since there. It's interesting that the first fight you worked with for Randy. Was against Nogueira, right. who is, you know, possibly the best or one of the best Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys right. ever to participate in mixed martial arts, um, which is a huge challenge to start off with for your first job, so to speak. Right. Right. How did you How did you deal with that? Yeah, it was exciting. I'm a big fan of Nogueira, so and I, we had some advantages there because I'm a very big guy. My body shape is similar to Nogueira. If anything, you know, sometimes I might be even a little bigger. I'm also a guard player by by nature, so you know, Gary was kind of a guard player, so it was a good opportunity for us to really be, not only be a coach for him, but a good sparring partner. Um, the thing about, I had a lot of challenges with Randy is that he actually ha didn't have a ton of technique on how to defend submissions, uh, like I would say intelligently, and, and his grappling, everything was very timing based. And Randy's kind of a sweaty guy, he's very athletic, so he got away with it for a lot of years. But when you go against really technical submission guys, uh, you know, he's going to have problems. And me being that kind of guy, I was able to really clean up a lot of his technique. And we covered a ton of material for Noguera. Like, we covered so much material in those nine weeks, it was crazy. But a lot of it was a lot of the basics a lot of defense because Noguera was going to offer a lot of offense on the submission side so we had to make sure Randy could intelligent, you know, defend himself. Um, this fight, Randy's pretty good to go on his defense so I said let's let's open up the offense and this has been a very offensive camp. The whole energy of this camp has been very offensive, very aggressive and uh, I kind of found myself a good position in training guys like Randy, these stud wrestlers and not teaching them necessarily jiu-jitsu but teaching how to beat jiu-jitsu and uh, it works great for me because I can teach them that and I can also be a training partner for them because basically if they can in, in most cases if they can survive against me in training they're probably going to be okay in, in, in the majority of their fights as far as submissions go uh, anything can happen I noticed um Without giving the game away, we went down to the Manchester Straight Blast Gym before to do some work there, Randy and myself were doing some training. There's a very particular choke that you were telling him to go for again and again. Yeah. Is that something that's featured in the game plan for this particular fight? Um, yeah, it's, a, it's part of the game plan for a couple of reasons. And, and the reason for that is when you're, when you're trying to keep a fighter on the ground and you want to try to do damage, a lot of times you're going to have to create space to hit him. When you create space to hit a, you know, hit the guy, he's going to use the opportunity to, to, to scramble. So if Randy gets into a position where 
he wants to do damage on this guy and he doesn't feel like he can hold them and do damage at the same time, he's got a now a good smothering technique and a choke to kind of smother his way into the choke and force the choke uh, rather than rather than like hitting him so the guy can escape. And it, it fell into the game plan really well. I toyed around with different submissions with Randy. I wanted to find something that his body was telling me to do. Like people are built, are more inclined for certain submissions. And with Randy, that particular choke, it was it. Like he, he picked it up quick. And the way we are training him on the ground, like some of the, the, the controls we're using, it sets up that choke a lot. So the option is gonna be there for him a lot. And it just, it blended really well. And I, I said, make me a promise. Promise me you're gonna master this. I want you to be the best. I want you to be the best in the world at this. And we hit it hard. So it's not like we're gonna go out there and focus on this choke. The choke, if it happens and he smells it, he's gonna take it. But he's just trying to win the fight. I mean, Brandon's no joke, so. We're going to take it anywhere we can get it. You said that um, this training camp's been very aggressive, and I'm told that your grappling style is also very aggressive. I, like, I was told that you're a guy who, like, the sports side of jiu-jitsu is one thing, but you've got to remember that also it's a fight and it's real violence. Right. Could you explain that a little bit for us? Yeah, my, my theory is intelligent violence is my method of fighting, basically. And I think it's okay to be a brute, and it's okay to do a lot of... A lot, a lot of different pain type things. I mean, th to be really creative and, and strategic with your with your attacks, submission wise and, and attacks, you have to create a threat. Like linear technique. Like if I go for a straight technique on you, if you're an educated grappler, or unless I'm very quick, most likely I'm gonna have problems. I'm always gonna incur problems. So I have to create a threat. So what's a threat? Okay, well, depending on where I'm at, there's a threat of if I'm on my back it's trying to sweep you. Okay, if I try to sweep you and you counter that, that can go into a submission afterwards, you know? Or I can go from one submission, and when you counter that, I go for another submission, chaining submissions together. If you're trying to hold me down, I want to get up, and I try to get up, and then you change and try to drive into me, you can go into submissions. And one of the things I like to use a lot is pain. If you create a lot of pain and discomfort on somebody, that's a threat. And what happens, they, they try to adjust that pain, and they give up a lot, and they give a lot of submissions. So the way I teach is, I use a lot of pain against my students, you know, certain students, guys that want to go become fighters, basically. And get them used to it, and not to break mentally, to understand it's just pain, they're not breaking anything, just to hang in there and, and develop and use it intelligently. And I'm uh, very anal that they use it against me as well, because they got to learn how to use this, and they're realizing, especially with Randy, they're getting everything they want by just causing a lot of pain, by cross-facing and doing a lot of things like that. So I, I feel that you have to be violent and, and aggressive, but you, you can still have a lot of technique. You don't have to be a, a clunky animal trying to rip someone's head off. I don't like to see that. I would say if you look at some of the top fighters in the world, Fedor, he's very intelligent, but he's violent. That's why he has one punch knockout power. The guy's very explosive, very violent. He, uh, let's look at George St. Pierre. If he's in your, if you're in, he's in your guard. He is super violent. He's very hard to control in his elbows. He's a very violent fighter. If you even look at jiu-jitsu guys, Marcelo Garcia, sweet, he's like a sweet looking looking guy, you know, super nice looking, like, uh, like he's a, like a jolly guy, you know. He is, watch how he grapples, he is so violent. He'll do anything to get behind you, and he's gonna tear your head off. I mean, that's the, he's also very technical. Guys like Jacare, very technical, but they're violent. And I think that's the one thing you'll notice is that people get into fighting, and they spar a lot, and they go against a fighter that's violent, they break. They're like, well, I don't know, they're not used to that. So I train it a lot, so they're the ones you know, giving out the pain. And if a guy is tough, they don't break, they're, they're, they can survive. And that's that's how I was kind of taught, uh, and that's I, I promote it. It's kind of an old school method of thinking.